So in three, two. Good evening. I will now call to order the September 19th, 2023 meeting of the Audit Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with Bo Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's audit committee is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. As a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Jamison or Ms. Barr if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Jamison, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Thank you, Ms. Lichter. I will start with Mr. McNillian. Yes, I'm here. Mr. Young. Present. Ms. Frempong. Ms. Lichter. Present. Thank you. A quorum being present, we will begin. Ms. Jamison, please call the roll of staff members participating in today's meeting. Thank you, Ms. Lichter. I will start with Ms. Barr. Present. Ms. Stevens. Present. Ms. Manna. Present. Mr. Fletcher. Present. Mr. Strait. Present. Ms. Sample. Here. Ms. Crew. Present. Mr. Edwards. Present. Ms. Smith. Present. Mr. Hartlove. Present. Ms. Becker. Present. Are there any other attendees present that I did not recognize? Hearing no additional names, I turn the meeting back to you, Ms. Lichter. Thank you. Lichter. Yes. Ms. Lichter, can I say something before you get started? Of course. OK, just to the listening public, I'm called in from the phone. I normally run this meeting. My computer's having issues. Mr. Jim Corns helped me for 33 minutes before the meeting and we couldn't get internet. So Ms. Lichter, Ms. Lichter volunteered to, to read the script because it's a whole lot more convenient. So I'm on the phone calling in. Thank you very much for your help. Of course. So on behalf of Chair McMillian, good afternoon. If committee members have questions that are outside the scope of the reports present this afternoon, please email Ms. Barr or, me, or Mr. McMillian with your questions. They will follow up with the appropriate individuals to get answers to your questions. The next item is approval of minutes. The live video footage of our last meeting represents the minutes of the meeting. The minutes stand approved as recorded. The next item are reports and Ms. Sample and Ms. Mana, please proceed with the FY24 use of facilities audit report. Thank you, Ms. Lichter. I will share my screen as I speak. OK, so I am Sandy Sample, one of the senior auditors in the office, and I will discuss the use of facilities program audit. We have with us Ms. Liz Becker, who is the director of the Office of Facilities Operations and Logistics. Ms. Becker will discuss management's corrective actions and help answer any questions. So the use of facilities audit report was issued on August 3rd, 2023, and the report can be found on internal audits website and on, on board docs for this meeting. Uh, just to give a little background, space and BCPS facilities may be used by the community and facilities operations is responsible for managing the community use of BCPS property. And the objective of the audit was to ensure that the use of facility activities are executed in compliance with policies and procedures, it's financially feasible and apportioned fairly and equitably. And we reviewed the 2022 calendar year for this audit. Um, there are a lot of responsibilities with overseeing the use of facilities and 
we identify some of those responsibilities in the report. For the 2022 calendar year, facilities operations approved over 160,000 activities and invoiced $9 million for those activities. So I'll scroll down. Um, and before we get into the issues regarding this audit, I'd like to, I want to commend the Office of Facilities Operations on the areas that were good. So the first commendation is regarding communications. Whenever I requested information, Ms. Becker almost instantly provided responses. Also, the staff responsible for performing use of facility responsibilities um, were extremely cooperative throughout the entire audit, and we really appreciate that. The second commendation is that the use of facility activities were properly approved. We saw that principals, offices, and other required approvals were made prior to any facility being used. The third commendation is regarding collected fees. For the fees that we reviewed, we saw that monies collected were remitted to the Office of Accounting, and we wanted to make sure money that was collected for using the facilities was actually turned in and accounted for, and we saw that that was happening. Um, the last commendation is regarding the appeals process. Uh, there were two facility requests that were denied and then appealed in 2022, and we saw that those appeals were compliant with Superintendent's Rule 1300. Okay, we'll scroll down and get into the results. Um, as I discuss the results, Ms. Becker will come in and speak about management's corrective action for each issue. The first issue is regarding proof of insurance. There were two use of facility activities where proof of insurance was not available because it couldn't be located um, with their current filing system. And so our recommendation there is that facilities operations should monitor use of facility requests and ensure that proof of insurance is both obtained and retained. So I will turn it over to Ms. Becker to discuss management corrective action for insurance. Thank you, Ms. Sample. Uh, in November of 2022, um, that was in part of the audit, um, our facilities operations staff created a centralized electronic filing system to ensure that all event documentation is organized, retained, and easily accessible now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Becker. Let's go down to the next issue. The second issue is that permits and or licenses were not available for 11 of the use of facility activities that we reviewed. One reason for not having required permits and licenses was because the user was Baltimore County Rec and Parks. And so, our recommendation, in addition to making sure that facilities operation obtain required permits and licenses, we recommend contacting Baltimore County government to determine requirements for rec recs and park applicants. And also standard operating procedures should be revised as well. I will turn it over to Ms. Becker to address management's corrective action. Thank you, Ms. Sample. A draft use of facilities uh, standard operating procedure or an SOP has been created and is currently in progress. The SOP will include steps to ensure confirmation of all required permits and licensing for recre recreation and parks and other community organizations. All documentations for each event will be retained in the centralized electronic filing system. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Specker. Okay, the third issue uh, we found with this audit is regarding the use of facility fees. The current fees may not cover the actual costs associated with community use of BCPS properties. There's a concern that current fees charged to use BCPS 
facilities do not actually cover wear and tear like uh, wear and tear on buildings or water or other costs. VCPS charges significantly less than surrounding counties as as indicated with the graph. So our recommendation is to increase the fee schedule uh, to cover actual costs and all costs associated with community use of facilities should be considered. I'll turn it back over to you, Ms. Becker, to address management's corrective action. Thank you, Ms. Sample. In consultation with the Office of Purchasing, the use of facilities fees are reviewed and adjusted annually to ensure that the fee schedule covers the associated operating costs. We are currently phasing in smaller increases over the next several years to give our organizations and daycare families time to understand the pricing adjustments. Thank you. Okay, we'll scroll down to the fourth issue, which is regarding the lack of an established fee collection process for when a community user does not pay their fee in a timely manner. So a little over $49,000 was owed to BCPS at December 31st, 2022. And, payment, and the payment due dates range from one to 15 months past due. And we understand that part of the reason was that the position responsible for sending the payment request letters was vacant. Also, we reviewed 25 use of facility activities to see if money had been remitted to the Office of Accounting. And of those 25, five had outstanding balances. And the payment request letters for those five ranged from 59 to 147 days between the date of the activity and the date of the payment request letter. So the first part of our recommendation is obvious that fees charged should be collected on time. We know that some users won't always pay on time, which is why we recommend facilities operations create a standard operation procedure, operating procedure that establishes when payment request letters are sent to users with unpaid balances. And we also recommend implementing a debt collection system. It's over to you to discuss management corrective action. Thank you, Ms. Sample. Facilities Operations has established a fee collection process and timeline that is being added to the draft use of facilities SOP. Additional consequences stated in Superintendent's Rule 1300 includes future applications for use of school facilities being denied and being removed from the event manager system. Since our staff is not trained to perform collection activities from organizations, all outstanding fees will be turned over to the Office of Accounting for further action. Finally, the 49,000 in unpaid use of facilities fees that was identified in the audit has since been collected and the vacancy that we had for six months has been filled. Thank you. Okay. I'll scroll down to the last issue. The last issue is related to use of facility requests that were denied because they were st stalled in Event Manager. Event Manager is the software used for use of facilities management. So we identified approximately 300 or 293 to be exact requests that were denied. And the reasons an event manager indicated that the requested date had passed, and so it was being cleared out of the system. And we learned that this was happening because school administrators were learning the new event manager system and did not recognize when requests required approval. So our recommendation is that facilities operations provide regular event manager training for school administrators to encourage the timeliness of approvals and denials. I'll turn it back over to you, Ms. Becker. All right, thank you, Ms. Sample. 
To reduce the number of stalled requests at the school level, facilities operations is in the process of creating a quarterly training or refresher that will be offered to the administrators to assist in navigating the system for the events for their schools. Additionally, we provide a step-by-step -step instructions through bcps.org in the resource tab at the bottom of the website. Thank you. OK, that is the end of the issues in this audit report. Um, I can turn it back over to you, Ms. Lichter, for any questions. OK, thank you for the report and thank you um, for the corrective action explanation. Is there any discussion or on this um, item? Ms. Lichter, this is Rob McMillian. I have a couple questions. OK, go ahead, Mr. McMillian. Ms. Becker, I'm curious on the organizations that that were allowed to use the facility, but they hadn't paid the money. It seems like if they had to pay up front, that would alleviate that problem, wouldn't it? Yes, they have from the time it's approved, they have 10 days to pay the fee. But some of the different organizations will contact us and work on like somewhat of a payment plan, like the larger, like the churches, because there are a, a lot larger invoices. Um, but it just so happens to be the ones that we have outstanding were some daycares that are currently in our school. And we were trying to work with them on payment because they were having issues with the payment. Uh, and some of the other ones were some other identified organizations, regular community organizations that we did um, put them on hold so they could not have future uh, events. But we do have a process and it is it, we are very stringent now with a person being in that position to be able to monitor that and to be able to work with the um, the organizations, the churches, and the daycares to make sure we get paid on time. But for the most part, for out of that $9 million a year, we are paid um, on time. Outstanding. And that makes sense because there's just like you mentioned, the churches and the daycares, we wouldn't want to keep the daycares out of our facilities because they're, they're trying to figure out their money piece because then we'd have all these kids and that what a mess that would be. So yeah, so your explanation makes a great deal of sense to me. The, the other thing I was questioning was the in, you talked about gradually increasing the cost of the fees. Are there any, is there any exception or any rules for nonprofit groups out there that could, you know, I could see people that, that have gone through the, that are official documented, approved nonprofit groups that wouldn't have a whole lot of money available to them to rent our facilities. Or is there any opportunity for them to come in and use with, without paying that, those fees? We work with a lot of different nonprofit organizations that come into our schools. And this is a great question because we are asked all the time about waived fees. And we do waive fees, but we cannot waive the custodial fees because if they have to come in on like a Saturday, we are, you know, we have to pay overtime to uh, those custodians plus any uh, type of supplies. So we can waive the space fees, but we do not waive the custodial fees. So that definitely takes the bill down uh, greatly. Yeah. And that makes a great deal of sense too, because we'd end up paying the, the custodians out of our pockets, you know, for their activities. So that makes sense. Absolutely. Ms. Becker, thank you very much for answering my questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Any other um, questions, Mr. Young? Do you have any questions? No, no questions. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't either. Mr. McMillian had one of the same ones I did. So um, again, thank you for the report and for answering the questions um, and for all the work you do. Thank you. Okay, the next item on the agenda is new business. 
Ms. Barr, please proceed with the review of policy 8400 and 8430. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. Since the policy was just approved this July 11th and it's our first meeting of the school year, I thought we should probably refamiliarize ourselves with the two policies. And in summary, I highlighted um, for internal audit and the audit committee. So with regard to internal audit, we are authorized to have free, full, unrestricted access to all folks in the organization, their documents, et cetera, except where prohibited by law. Organizationally, we, we report to the board. Evaluations are to be completed annually. Internal audit will re remain free from interference to maintain independence. We have the responsibility to complete our work plan audits in accordance with standards, uh, and we follow the Red Book and in accordance with policy rules. We also have to evaluate risk and present findings and recommendations to the committee and the board. We administer the fraud, waste, and abuse hotline. We are required to present an annual work plan. We will issue audit reports and monitor management's corrective actions. We have the responsibility to advise the board, superintendent, and executive staff of any significant deficiencies, undue risks, or other substantive issues that we note in our audits. And we also must provide quarterly summary of significant audit issues and corrective measures taken and mid-year and year-end summary of our work plan accomplishments. So that in a nutshell is our responsibilities um, in policy 8400. With respect to the audit committee, um, you all have the responsibility to assist the board to fulfill its fiduciary responsibilities and provide an open avenue of communication between our office, the board, and um, financial folks in the organization. The uh, committee members shall have or acquire knowledge of the BCPS basic finance and accounting practices, have the ability to read and understand BCPS financial statements, and the ability to understand BCPS key business and financial risks and related controls and control processes. The committee should meet, shall meet at least four times annually and approve our annual work plan, review internal audit reports together with management responses, participate in the selection of the external auditor, understand BCPS systems of internal controls, and also review and understand our office's risk assessment process. So again, that's kind of a, a nutshell of the responsibilities for the committee. And those policies are listed in their entirety in board docs if anybody's interested in reading the whole thing. But again, it's just a refresher for everybody at the start of the year to make sure that we're all on the same page with what we're supposed to be doing. Um, thank you, Ms. Barr, for that. Um, does anybody have any question or discussion on the information that Ms. Barr just presented? No, thank okay. you. Okay. Okay, thank you for that. Let me just make sure I know where I am. Um, okay, Ms. Barr and Ms. Stevens, please proceed with the FY25 budget request. So BCPS is implementing a system-wide zero-based budget request process this year for, uh, for FY25. Additionally, Red Book says that we should have the board approve our office bu budget. However, no motion is needed at this time since the board will approve the superintendent's overall budget request, which would include our office's request. But I wanted Ms. Stevens to provide an overview to the committee with respect to our FY25 requests. So Ms. Stevens is gonna uh, discuss the budget by line item. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. So our baseline budget, or what is also referred to as our mark uh, for FY25 is $47,788. That is a strictly non-salary budget. Uh, the bulk of our non-salary expense is in our software license fees. We're requesting $30,588. Um, 26,500 of that is requested for our teammate audit management system that we acquired two years ago. Uh, this amount covers the license and maintenance fees for all 10 of our staff members. Um, our current contract with teammate expires on a year from this October, so October 2024. Uh, so this amount is estimated for right now. Um, additionally, we have uh, $4,088 uh, that's requested for our IDEA software. Uh, that is a very robust data extraction and analysis software package that we use. Um, 
this amount covers the uh, license fee for three concurrent licenses that we can share between um, all 10 of our staff members. It's not really necessary for us to have a license for each person. Um, we have actually licensed this software for over 20 years. It's been around longer than I have. <laughs> and um, fortunately, we were grandfathered into a very, very low uh, cost license fee for this. Um, currently, if we were to request any additional licenses that would be over four thousand dollars for each license so we're very lucky to to uh, be getting three concurrent licenses for four thousand dollars so uh, the next expense area relates to professional development for our staff we're requesting a total of six thousand five hundred dollars for that four thousand of that is for our conference fees um, we have two um, conferences in particular that we feel are very um, beneficial for us the very cost effective and that is the um, annual uh, conferences put on by the Association of Local Government Auditors and the Maryland chapter of the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners. Um, we attend both of those virtually, so there's no additional uh, training or I'm sorry, um, travel costs for that. Additionally, um, we are requesting $2,500 for staff development. Uh, our staff do a great job of finding and attending uh, free webinars and seminars that are offered um, by some of our um, vendors and that sort of thing, and some of our associations. Um, however, there are other low cost webinars and courses that we need to meet our professional development requirements and to keep up with uh, industry standards. Um, so we're asking for about $250 per staff member for this purpose. Um, we are actually um, required to attend and um, receive professional development, both uh, due to Red Book and for our certifications. Our next section is our professional dues. So um, with our certifications come dues in um, some of our professional organizations. Uh, currently, we have two group memberships. Uh, we're mem the whole staff is members in the Institute of Internal Auditors that runs about $1,650 a year and the Association of Local Government Auditors, which is about $585 a year. Uh, the remainder of our request in that section are for our um, individual memberships in the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners. We have seven uh, CFE certified fraud examiners on staff and uh, we have three associate members so that total comes out to $2,465 for those 10 member individual memberships. Additionally we have a request for office supplies uh, since we are a 100% electronic office we don't have a whole lot of supplies that we need um, and most of what we use are uh, technology related so this request um, asks for two external monitors for each one of our staff members to uh, supplement the laptops that we use. Uh, this um, currently we have monitors that we are using, but they are uh, nine plus years old and we're um, thinking that they're likely to start failing soon. So um, we're just asking for the uh, $4,000 to uh, replace the two lap or I'm sorry, the two monitors that uh, each staff member currently has. And lastly, we're requesting $2,000 for mileage. Uh, this will reimburse our staff for up to 3,000 miles of business travel um, to and from in-person meetings and to and from auditee locations. So that completes our request. And again, that total number was $47,788. So if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to take them now. Are there any questions from board members? No, thank you. I'm good too. All right. OK, thank you for that overview. Sure. Um, the next meeting of the audit committee. Will be on Tuesday, October 17th. At 430 PM. I will now entertain a motion to convene an administrative function function session to discuss the operations of the committee. May I have a motion, please? So moved, Young. Thank you. May I have a second? A second, Ms. McMillian. Thank you. It has been properly moved and second that we convene an administrative function session to discuss these matters. Ms. Jamison, will you please call the roll? Ms. Lichter? Um, yes. 